Hey, Ritter friends. Um, I'm sitting here at my desk and I'm going to attempt to make a selfie movie. And uh, the purpose of this is to introduce you uh, to a skill set that we are going to present at the next retreat, at the next Ritter retreat. Uh, the skill set we call Generating and Sustaining Creative Tension. And uh, I've got a little poster here. Generating and Sustaining Creative Tension. And uh, you look at those words, the one that jumps out at me is tension. Uh, you'd probably ask, why do we want to generate tension? There's enough tension in the church already. And uh, we don't want to just generate tension, but we want to generate a certain type of tension uh, with a certain goal. Uh, the goal is to create some energy, uh, which in turn will create an urgency for change. Uh, so our goal is, is change and to to spur our congregations towards change, we want to introduce this uh, creative tension. We want to generate it. The challenge as leaders is to sustain it. Uh, people don't like tension, and so we can expect that our congregations or, or the systems that we're a part are going to push back uh, when we introduce uh, tension and change. Uh, so the challenge of leadership is to sustain that tension in the midst of the pushback. So how does it work? How do we generate tension? Uh, we begin uh, over here with current reality, and uh, we get really clear about what is true, what is so in our context, in our congregation, in our community. Um, and uh, the best friend of current reality is clarity. We want to be as clear as we possibly can. Uh, we want uh, our current reality to be objective uh, therefore, we need multiple people working on this. It can't be the work of one person or else it's going to be biased. It'll likely be subjective. And the reason we want it to be objective is so that it can then be shared. Uh, so that when you communicate your current reality to your congregation, uh, they may not like what you're going to say, uh, but they can't argue with it. So, for example, this morning I stepped on a scale and uh, there was a number staring back at me and I didn't like it. I could argue with it. I could argue with the scale. Uh, but the fact is the number is the number. Um, and, and it shows me the current reality of my weight. Well, the same thing is true of your congregation. There's a current reality and you want to be as uh, objective as you possibly can to put it out. So, so your congregation is going to share this understanding that, yes, this is true. Uh, and so then what makes it compelling uh, is when you also do the work around another circle. So you have current reality, and now you do the work around God's preferred future. Uh, your task as a, a leader and a leadership team is to discern where is God calling you. And uh, most likely, it is not going to line up with your current reality. Uh, if that's the case, you're in like the best church ever. Don't ever leave. Uh, but those circles, those two circles, current reality and God's prefer preferred future are not going to line up. There's a, a gap between them. And uh, that gap is where the tension comes from. If you can get really clear about what is so and get clear about where God is calling us, uh, what's not currently so, there's a gap there. And that gap represents some tension. Now, what's likely to happen uh, is one of three things. Uh, the congregation is going to resist that gap, is going to resist that tension uh, because they don't want to change. But even more importantly than that, uh, it's not that they don't want to change. It's that they don't want to leave things behind in order to change. And so they're going to resist. And one of the ways they can resist is by suddenly becoming fuzzy about current reality. Uh, saying, well, oh, it's really not as bleak as we're saying it is. And so you move that current reality closer to God's preferred future, which reduces the tension. Or you get fuzzy on the vision, get fuzzy on God's preferred future, and you move that circle closer to current reality, and that, that reduces the tension. Uh, the way we hope the tension gets reduced is that as a, a church, you begin to get into action to close that gap uh, by by. Uh, aligning what is so with what God is calling you, uh, where God's calling you to go. In that gap between current reality and God's preferred future are all kinds of obstacles. They're not named there. It's just white space. But there's all kinds of obstacles that are there. Uh, if they weren't there, you'd probably already be at God's preferred future. 
uh, obstacles like maybe a lack of knowledge. Uh, maybe your, your church and your leaders and you need to grow in some knowledge and some skills to close that gap. Maybe there's some emotional immaturity, some unresolved conflict, some anxiety, some integrity gaps, all kinds of things that are in that, that space that as the, the leader and the leaders of your church, you're gonna have to navigate uh, through those obstacles. Um, the last little piece of this uh, model that uh, I wanna present is what we call default future. Uh, and that's down here. And uh, what you'll notice, um, or I should say this, that uh, you've often heard that it was said that uh, if you keep doing what you've always done, you keep getting what you've always gotten. And uh, in fact, that is not true. Uh, this is especially true if you're in a somewhat healthy church. Uh, there's going to be this strong sense of, you know, things are going fairly well, so why can't we just stay uh, where our current reality is? And the reality is, is that uh, your current reality today will not be your current reality five years from today if you do nothing, if you do nothing different. There is a default future uh, that is lurking out there, and it's an undefined uh, default future. You don't know what it is, um, but uh, no action will lead to a different future than what you're currently existing. That is the rough sketch, terribly done, uh, but please review this prior to our retreat. And uh, then we're gonna ask you to recreate the model. Um, and then we're gonna work a little bit more on this. So we'll see you in a couple weeks.